Good afternoon, everyone. We have head coach Ronnie Dyla here for the press conference pre-Toronto this weekend. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get started with John Lupo. Ronnie, now that you've had some time to sort of evaluate the first of four matches of the season, what, what have you noticed? What have you been pleased with? What do you think the team has to improve on? I think we had done a, a really good uh, first half of the season. Uh, it's been challenges that we have never been through before, um, and it's something you learn. Uh, right now, I don't know what I would do differently, uh, because it's impossible to know uh, if you haven't tried something else. So, But in general, I think we, we are in a good place. If we could uh, choose that before we started, uh, that we have uh, four points in the league, and that we are um, in the... I'm <coughs> sorry. Oh. That we are in the semi final in Champions League, I think we will be very, very happy. So we have had a couple of weeks off now. I think, you know, it, you saw in the end of the uh, period that we had some trouble uh, with uh, fatigue and uh, we start to get tired um, and, and go to Mala and uh, then coming into the Philadelphia game. Um, and I think just, you know, you, you, your lack of the 10% with the um, sharpness and you come a half a yard too late in uh, in things and uh, and then it's tougher to get the result you want. So I hope now that we have um, get some rest, get our minds right uh, and, and mentally and, uh, and also body physically the, to to get those 10% back again so we, we can show ourselves from the best side. Joe Tallison. Ronnie, no secret over the years that Alejandro Pozuelo has kind of been a difference maker for Toronto. Uh, how do you contain him but not worry about everybody else on that team? Uh, I have as I said many times about these things. Um, he's a good player. Uh, at the same time, we, we have to defend him as a team. Um, if we give him space um, and options, then uh, he will be good because he has... Uh, that skill that it can uh, can hurt you. Uh, so we need to be very disciplined. We need to be very clear in how we how we attack the situation and defensively. Um, and for us, it's to be in compact. That's the most important thing. Um, squeeze the play to a side, get across um, short uh, distance between each other, and uh, be very aggressive in the center of the pitch because he he drifts also a lot inside. He's not an outside winger. He's uh, inside uh, number ten almost, and then um, we need to be close and tight and um, and um, and force him to 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 do mistakes. Jake Nisi. Hey Ronnie, um, Alex Kyan's just a couple of days ago played ninety minutes for Peru in their uh, World Cup qualifier, which was a win for them, and uh, has now gotten them a place in the playoff. Um, come summertime. How is his availability, uh, his readiness for this weekend now? And uh, have you had a chance to offer any congratulatory words to him on, uh, you know, getting to that next step in the World Cup qualification? Uh, Kainz is a machine. He has, uh, he's played uh, the last uh, 12 months, I think, unbelievable amount of games. And he takes care of himself. He do everything right uh, all the time. Rest a lot, uh, eat right train right so he's a, a top professional and that's why he can keep going uh, with uh, all that load he has physically and mentally um, and also it helps to achieve something uh, it's more easy than so to come to the playoff now is a great achievement for for him and for the team and um, at the same time when he come back here he plays important games so we're gonna play now in the league and also into the Champions League again so he's uh, I'm sure if you ask him, he, he living his, his, his best dreams, you know, uh, and, and could play in so many different uh, places um, and uh, and fight for, for big things like Champions League and um, and uh, World Cup. So so he's uh, he will be ready for for Saturday and um, and um, and I know he's, he's do everything to the rest to do as good as possible. It was good he played Tuesdays and the Wednesday. Tuesday is uh, four days into the next one, and that's a bigger chance than to, to be restituted.
Michael Andrew. Ronnie, thanks for taking the time. Just curious uh, where the team is mentally. They uh, didn't come off uh, two, uh, two positive results in the last two games. So I'm just curious uh, how you're going to get their swagger back going into Saturday. Well, it'll be clear. In the, first of all, get them rest. And that's what uh, everybody gets a week uh, with the training from myself or the, uh, with themselves and, and uh, travel a little bit if to, they want to do or stay home and, and, and rest. And then um, this week we have been uh, have a lot of intensity in training, and then it's about having a clear plan into the game and and uh, and uh, get the belief and uh, the confidence to to be uh, be positive and looking forward to things. And we have no uh, reason not to look forward to what's coming ahead of us now. It's a, a lot of nice games, and Toronto is always a tough place to go, and um, we need to. It would be nice to win up there. For, I, I haven't. Uh, it's a long time since we've been there. Uh, I don't know if they have ever won there up there, but uh, not in my time. Um, so, um, so hopefully we can uh, go up there and perform at our best, and, and we get three points uh, with us to to Seattle. Last one, Juan Carlos. Hi, coach. Uh, thank you for the time. As you know, always uh, you want to evade, you know, your players getting injured uh, during, during an international break. But uh, Chanel uh, sustained an injury. How do you know the seriousness of the injury? And also a second question. Did you get a chance to see NYCFC too? And what were your first impressions if you may be able to elaborate? Thanks. Uh, Maxime get an a injury in his, uh, his eye. Um, um, he's still in. Um, he goes from Serbia to Luxembourg today. So then we have to see a specialist, and then we'll see how serious the, the injury are. Uh, if he's going to be ready for Saturday or Wednesday or whatever going to happen. So uh, hopefully it's not a big thing. But um, he had to go out from the game, and, and um, he's um, he's uncertain. What the, what the status are right now. So hopefully everything go well uh, with him. Um, and I was, of course, in the in the second uh, team game uh, on Sunday. I was uh, there and watched the game. And I think it's a unbelievably important thing for the whole league to to get a place for the second best and the best talents we have to, to play. The level of the game was good. There was a good tempo in it. and. Um, and to to see them in 11, 11, uh, 90 minutes um, and do that almost every week, that's going to be a, a huge uh, a step forward for developing of, uh, and players and, and keep them fit and ready for the first team. So I'm very, very happy with, uh, with that game. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We have Andres Jason here. Um, we'll get started with John Lupo. Andres, it must have been nice to have a bit of a break, but just as you come back now, well, what are you looking forward to? I mean, Ronnie said he's been pretty pleased with the way the team's performed, and obviously going up to Toronto won't be easy. Just to, how do you feel? Um, what are you looking forward to as you get restarted with the league season? Yeah, I think we started the season with like a lot of games uh, back to back to back. So it was definitely nice to get a break. And um, I think we're excited now to get going in the MLS and try and pick up three points and really um, start moving with some good results in the MLS. So looking forward to that. And then um, after that, then we have CONCACAF. So uh, one game at a time, but definitely looking forward to these games coming up. Christian Hennage. Hi, Andres. Uh, Ronnie has quite a track record for developing young players. I'm curious if that's something you take confidence from when it comes to trusting him with your own development. Yeah, of course. Um, I think Ronnie's such a such a good coach, especially with young guys in terms of um, helping us out, um, giving us opportunities, but also holding us accountable um, to, you know, playing to a certain standard um, and stuff like that. So he's been really helpful, not only for me, but for other young guys like Talas, Tavon, um, so yeah, he's been great. Joe Tolleson. Andres, you signed with the team in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, last season was still kind of 
getting back to what we might want to call normal, but how's it been for you this season um, where you really get more of the professional experience, the long travel and everything and how you're adjusting to that? Yeah, it's been great. I think um, the first few weeks um, of this season with all the travel and all the games back to back was something that I hadn't really experienced. So um, that was something that I kind of had to navigate and learn. Um, but I think the rest of it has been pretty similar to last year in terms of um, the way we do things, the way we prepare for games. So um, I would just say those games in terms of every three days was probably the most um, new thing that I had to go through. Michael Andre. Andre, it's a nice uh, gesture. We're wearing the uh, Jack Reina sweatshirt. You know, hat tip to, to Gio there and the Reina family. Uh, question for you, Ronnie talked about the fatigue, both physical and mental, before the international break. So talk to us uh, from a player's perspective. Just how hard was it to, uh, to push through in those last uh, couple of games? Yeah, I think it was tough. Um, you know, like you said it mentally and physically, but, um, you know, I think we, we all tried to prepare the best we could for all the games. And, um, you know, I didn't think we showed that much fatigue. I think we had some moments where um, we might not have been at, you know, our best, but I think um, we handled it well. And I think now we're well rested and, and ready to go again. Jake Nisi. Sorry, I was on mute. Hey, Andres. Um, You've obviously played a bit of uh, fullback this year, and, and Ronnie's been complimentary of your uh, performances there. Um, aside from giving your body a rest, I'm curious if you've gotten a chance to kind of dig into that role a little bit further over this break and kind of, you know, watch any tape or just kind of assess, uh, you know, what you need to be doing there. Yeah, I think this break's been a good time to uh, kind of watch games back and, and dive into um, mistakes that I've made, things that I've done well, both defensively, offensively. Um, also, through the international break, just watch other, you know, top right backs and see what they do, how they um, defend crosses, how they get forward, where they're um, positioned in certain places. So I think it's been good to analyze my game, but also be able to watch um, pros at the highest level do the same. Final question, Juan Carlos. Hi, Andres, and to go a bit off topic, um, you might be familiar with uh, some of the players at NYCFC too. Uh, if you had a chance to actually speak out on one of the future talents, uh, who would you pick uh, to be like one of the players to look forward to within that team? Yeah, I think there's a lot of players who are really talented on that team. Um, you know, the main one that comes to mind is uh, Nico Benalcazar, who uh, came through in the academy with us and um, then went to Wake Forest. And he's a center back um, who can play different positions, but he's really good on the ball. He's good defensively and um, he's a great leader. So I think he's someone to definitely keep an eye on in the few next few years. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.